Chapter 5. You are always choosing. Responsibility and tragedy. When something terrible happens, like a robbery or an act of violence, it's natural to feel overwhelmed and powerless. After all, these events are often out of our control and can leave us feeling shattered. However, what's important to realize is that even in the midst of such chaos, we still have some degree of agency. Responsibility here doesn't mean being at fault for what happened. It's more about acknowledging that we have choices in how we respond. For example, if someone gets robbed, they could react in various ways. They could panic, they could seek help, or they could try to move on as best as they can. Each of these reactions involves a decision, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. By recognizing that we have some control over our responses, even in the face of tragedy, we empower ourselves. It's not about ignoring the pain or pretending everything is okay. It's about understanding that our reactions can shape our experiences moving forward. This doesn't make the pain any less real, but it does offer a path towards healing and resilience. Ultimately, taking responsibility in times of tragedy means acknowledging our capacity to choose how we navigate the challenges life throws our way. It's about reclaiming a sense of agency and control, even when everything else seems uncertain. And in doing so, we can begin to find strength and purpose amidst the darkness. Genetics and Neurological Conditions Imagine your genes as a set of instructions that shape who you are. Sometimes, these instructions can lead to conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, where people feel compelled to do certain things over and over again. Now, having a CD or any other neurological condition isn't anyone's fault. It's just the hand you've been dealt genetically. But here's the thing. While you didn't choose to have a CD, you still have a say in how you deal with it. Manson talks about accepting the imperfections that come with conditions like OCD. That means understanding that you might have these unwanted thoughts or behaviors, but they don't define you. Instead of letting OCD control your life, you can choose to focus on what really matters to you, your values. For example, let's say you have a compulsion to wash your hands constantly because you're afraid of germs. That's where your OCD kicks in. But if your value is to lead a fulfilling social life or to pursue your passions, constantly washing your hands might get in the way of that. So, instead of letting OCD dictate your actions, you can learn to manage it. You might work with therapists or engage in exercises that challenge your compulsions. It won't be easy, but by prioritizing your values over your compulsions, you can gradually gain more control over your life. The key takeaway here is that while genetics and neurological conditions may present challenges, you still have the power to shape your own path. It's about accepting your circumstances, focusing on what truly matters to you, and taking steps to live in alignment with your values despite the obstacles you may face. Victimhood, cheek, and social media? Picture this, you're scrolling through your social media feed, and what do you see? People posting about how they've been wronged or slighted, even over the smallest thing. Maybe it's someone complaining about their coffee order being wrong or feeling outraged because a store didn't have their favorite snack. This is what Manson calls victimhood chick. It's when individuals jump on the bandwagon of portraying themselves as victims to get attention and validation from others. They play up minor inconveniences or grievances, making them seem like major injustices. And where does social media come into play? Well, platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram have made it easier than ever to broadcast these grievances to a wide audience. People share their stories of perceived injustice, and others chime in with sympathy and support, fueling the cycle of victimhood. But here's the problem. When everyone is clamoring to be seen as a victim, it detracts from the experiences of those who are genuinely suffering. Imagine someone who has endured real hardship. Maybe they've faced discrimination, abuse, or trauma. Their struggles are overshadowed by the flood of minor complaints and grievances filling up social media feeds. Not only that, but this culture of victimhood contributes to societal polarization. 
people become divided into camps of victims and oppressors, with each side seeking validation for their grievances. Instead of fostering understanding and empathy, it drives people further apart, deepening existing divides. So, what's the solution? Manson suggests being mindful of how we portray ourselves online and being wary of jumping on the victimhood bandwagon. We should prioritize genuine empathy and support for those who are truly suffering, rather than seeking attention for minor inconveniences. By doing so, we can create a more compassionate and understanding online environment. Changing values and taking responsibility. Imagine you're at a crossroads in your life. You realize that some of the values you've been living by aren't serving you well anymore. Maybe you've been prioritizing material success over personal fulfillment or seeking validation from others instead of cultivating self-acceptance. Manson acknowledges that making a change like this isn't easy. It's like stepping into the unknown, where uncertainty, failure, and rejection await. You might feel like you're losing your footing or questioning whether you're making the right choice. But despite these challenges, Manson argues that embracing discomfort is crucial for personal growth. It's through facing these uncomfortable feelings that we can begin to break free from old patterns and make room for new possibilities. One key aspect of this process is making conscious choices aligned with our values. Instead of passively drifting through life, we take an active role in shaping our destiny. We choose to prioritize what truly matters to us, even if it means going against the grain or facing resistance from others. For example, if you realize that your current job isn't fulfilling your deeper values, you might decide to pursue a different career path that aligns more closely with your passions and aspirations. This decision might involve leaving behind the security of a steady paycheck or facing skepticism from friends and family, but it's a choice you make because it resonates with your true desires. In essence, changing values and taking responsibility for our lives is about reclaiming agency and ownership over our decisions. It's about recognizing that we have the power to shape our own destinies, even in the face of uncertainty and adversity. And while the journey may be challenging, the rewards personal growth, fulfillment, and authenticity are well worth the effort. Manson wants us to think deeply about how we view responsibility, victimhood, and our own power to make choices. Instead of pointing fingers at outside forces for our problems, he urges us to look inward and consider how our own decisions and values contribute to our experiences. Imagine you're facing a tough situation, a setback at work, a conflict in your relationships, or a personal challenge. It's easy to blame your boss, your partner, or circumstances beyond your control for what's happening. But Manson suggests a different approach, taking a hard look at the choices you've made and the values you hold. For example, let's say you're unhappy in your job. Instead of blaming your boss or the economy, Manson encourages you to ask yourself, are you staying in this job because it aligns with your values and passions? Or are you afraid to make a change because of fear or insecurity? By shifting the focus from external factors to our own decisions and values, Manson believes we can become more resilient and empowered in the face of adversity. We start to see ourselves as active participants in our own lives, capable of making meaningful choices that lead to greater fulfillment and happiness. Ultimately, Manson's message is about taking ownership of our lives and embracing the agency we have to shape our own destinies. It's about recognizing that while we can't control everything that happens to us, we can control how we respond and the values we choose to prioritize. And by doing so, we can create a more fulfilling and authentic life for ourselves.